It's time for version 2.0. Hello, Emmett Ryan here from Ball in Europe, and it is great to be back with you all today. We're here to talk about Victor Wembanyama and what awards I think he can win, what he might win, and what I don't think he's going to win. And this video is very much inspired by a video that Clan the Spurs fan put out last week. I will be linking to that below. And he was talking about, you know, what conversations he was in. And I was figuring, give this Euro side of the Atlantic perspective here from Ireland on what I'm seeing with Wembenyama, what I think he's going to contend for, what I think he's going to win. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can do so down there or up there or wherever you're looking. Uh, find the button, please subscribe, and let's get to it. So yeah, for me, these are the obvious ones, to be honest. Uh, I feel he's a lock beyond locks for all defensive. Obviously, these are all health-permitting, uh, both of these. He obviously was all for defensive first team uh, this past season in his rookie year. I would be very surprised if he isn't all defensive first te season team in his sophomore season. He is, like, we're calling him the alien, and what we've seen from him is just phenomenal as a defender. So I think we can walk in there saying, if Victor Wembanyama is healthy, he's walking onto the all defensive first team. So the one you're more interested in here is why I'm so confident of him getting DPOI, Defensive Player of the Year. Obviously, it's become a bit of a French award, mainly thanks to mainly thanks to Victor Rudy Gobert in recent years. But Wemby has said, you know, he can have that one last year, but I'm coming for the rest. And yeah, like Wemby is clearly the favorite, both in the eyes of the average viewer watching but also the sports books he's four to six on like odds on for an nba award before the season starts is not common uh so like he's six to four on which as in reads four slash six but think about what that fundamentally means it means the betting market thinks that victor Wembanyama has a better chance of winning this award not just than any other individual player in the nba but then all of those players combined all of them put together have less of a chance of winning DPOI than Wemby. And the reason for that's pretty simple. There was a very he was very close to doing it last year. And like Wemby was so impressive. Showed out obviously he had the 10.6 boards per game, but also 3.6 uh, blocks per game, which led the association uh, you know in, in blocks per game. So he's already put up the good stats. We think he can take a step forward. Like He's an extraordinary phenom, it's safe to say, and he showed out in that first season. Like, he won Rookie of the Year for a reason, uh, because he just utterly dominated. He played at a high-grade, star, frankly, level NBA performance in his opening season. Like, he was st just shy of four assists per game, assists per game, as well as getting, like, was it 21 points something points per game? Uh, like, he was good, is what we're trying to say, like, you know? And, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be the contender. Like, obviously, Obviously, the PPG isn't really going to factor in for a defensive, but also he's got some ability. So it's not like you're worried about him, you know, as a perimeter defender. <laughs> you know, he's he's not he's switching on him isn't necessarily going to mean you've solved the problem. Uh, switching, if anything, might make the problem worse. Although that said, Japan showed small guys can take on Wemby uh, in the Olympics. But yeah, like Gobert is obviously going to be in the conversation again. But he's won four, winning a fifth is asking an awful lot. And this just screams of a situation where it's almost tailor-made for Wembenyama to make the step forward and win DPOI in his second season. So yeah, all defensive team, absolute lock. DPOI, I would also be extremely surprised if he doesn't win. So they're the two we have locked down. Now we have the ones I'm confident about. Yeah, so All-Star and All-NBA. Obviously, I didn't say first team there because All-NBA is a bit of a weird one uh you don't have to be on a playoff team to get in the conversation for all nba luca showed that a couple of years ago but i think Wemby all-star voting is going to be interesting because you've got to remember front court and, and back court is how they do the voting for the fans and players and everybody else and like you're going to have a couple of serious heavy hitters in front court voting like uh, lebron obviously uh, but also you've got Jokic there too like you've got two guys who are going to be taking up huge chunks of votes and there will be other guys in there too. So I don't think it's a walk to the All-Star game, but at the same time, they're just the starting positions. Uh, I think when you look at sort of between A, that there is still going to be one other not overwhelming vote-getter uh, spot available. Like, there's still going to be guys getting it, but it'll be surpassable votes uh, in the front court. That's an obvious bonus. But then you get to, like, the substitution picks, and again, I can't see him not getting selected as a sub. So for me, All-Star... You know, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, 
it's a it's a lock. And then we get to All NBA, and again the way that's voted on, if he's winning DPOY, I mean it's just next to near impossible to think that it'll be DPOY and all defensive and not get at least third team All NBA. And especially the way, again, that like big guys tend to get a bit of the love, uh, rightly so in Wemby's case, just to be clear. I'm feeling that, again, yeah, he should make an All-NBA team this coming summer. Again, we've got to assume a certain level of progress, but not that much, really. And so these two, for me, again, I'm very confident of. I'm not going to say the locks I have for the first two, but I'm extremely confident on those two, I feel. We will see him be an All-Star, because everybody wants to see Wemby All-Star weekend. Uh, he's obviously going to have his own show-out games, effectively, in Paris, uh, twice for the Spurs against the Pacers. And people are going to be still thinking, when All-NBA voting comes in, it's like, yeah, he's he's got to be in that conversation amongst those 15 guys selected. Like, wh- which NBA... All NBA team, do you think he'll make? Uh, let me know in the comments. Like, will it be first team, second team, third team, or will he not make it at all? Have a chat with me in the comments there. See what you're thinking there. Now we get on to the last two, which I think are the two you really want to know about in terms of sort of the maybes and ifs and buts. And I'm a little colder on one than you think, and not completely ruling out the other despite that. So MIP, we're going to start off with. Most improved player. And that is a very, very tough award to win as a player who's already won Rookie of the Year. How tough is it? It's never been done. Now, Clan in his video, and this is one one of the reasons I wanted to do this video, he said, we have seen stars win it. And he's right. Like, Giannis, I suppose, probably the biggest name, but several other people, we would Jamarant, have won most improved player while being at superstar level in, well, no, sorry, while who are now superstars in the NBA. I'd argue Giannis hadn't quite hit superstar level yet in terms of the public view of him when he won it. Uh, although we can debate that, he was definitely verging on it. And yeah, had. Uh, but at the same time, the two things, the one thing the two of them had going for them almost was that they had not won Rookie of the Year. So it wasn't like you're saying, well, we already rewarded him for being really, really good at basketball. Like they hadn't been in that sense. They hadn't won the Rookie of the Year award. So winning ROI is almost a disqualifier for MIP, but not entirely. Like if one player is capable of breaking it, is Victor Wembanyama, and the sports books largely agree. He is the favorite right now at eight to one, and an awful lot of the consensus when you hear people talking is they expect him to win it. But it's a big jump needed now. It's a doable jump because again, we're talking about a guy who's already considered a superstar in the sport. It's a very doable jump. It's just, he's got a bigger ask, really, than most players when you think about it, because MIP, it's sort of meant to recognize a jump that somewhat wasn't expected, and it's, you know, we may not say that, but it kind of is, like, so people are talking about Kaminga uh, being in the conversation. For me, I think the odds are very tough for Kaminga, as tough as they are for Wemby, because so many people are talking about them winning it. I kind of figure, well... Yeah, I know, I'm doing lots of face in this video today, not on purpose. It's like... Wemby's going to have to jump what are some pretty good numbers already up to another level and maybe a bit more for MIP. Like, MIP might actually be the hardest award for him to win this season, even though the odds makers don't say so, purely because of getting inside the minds of the voters. So, do I feel he should be in contention for it? Absolutely. And he is the favourite, albeit a long way from odds on. Although, if ever there was an award that shouldn't have an odds on favourite, it's MIP, by the way, because again, there's meant to be an element of we didn't see this coming in it. And obviously, we kind of all see it coming with Wemby. So, yeah, I, I'm not high on him winning MIP, but I'm not that cold on it either. I think he's in the conversation, but that's going to be actually more work for him than DPOY or any of the uh, end-of-season teams or the All-Star. I think MIP is going to be a lot more work than DPOY in terms of winning the voters over, not being justified as winning it. I think they're two different things to me. MVP. Now, people go, come on, he's not winning MVP in the second season. And I largely agree, but the price of 22 to 1, like, I don't bet, uh, uh, apart from, oddly, cans of Coca-Cola with friends of mine. I'm not sponsored by Coke. That's just sort of these noble bets we have when we're so convinced of something. But 22 to 1, I was kind of going... Because he's going to get a lot of support, and if he takes that step forward, things could be great. Oddly, the thing holding him back is that he's not going to be on a playoff team. Like, we know how stacked the West is. We also know the Spurs are still taking steps forward. They're going to be better this year. They're going to win more games. I think they'll break 30 wins. I don't think that's enough to win MVP. Like, no matter how good you are, if you're on a side that's, like, not 
contending to make the postseason, and I feel that's the case with the Spurs this season, that they won't be contending to make the postseason. Justifying you as MVP for anyone is difficult. And I say this oddly as someone who, in a different competition, did vote for someone as MVP once who didn't do that. So EuroLeague, for those of you who don't know, used to have a four. It's now a single uh, league. Everybody plays each other twice. Uh, and then playoffs and finals. It used to have multiple stages. So there was the regular season back then was four groups of six. Then you would join into two large groups of eight from the teams qualifying through that. And then it would be onto the playoffs and the finals. And uh, Boban, hey, I love Boban. Boban Marjanovic, uh, I felt one year he single-handedly carried uh, Karina Zvezda uh, to the uh, top 16 phase, like so those two groups of eight. And he was so dominant in that season, I felt it was enough to give him my MVP vote. Now, he wasn't in conversation for it at the end. So, yeah, I think it, the justification can be made. I just don't think most voters are going to make the justification, which is why I don't think Wembenyama uh, is realistically going to be in the MVP conversation come the year end. But don't be surprised to see him still appear in quite a few ballots, that being said. So, yeah, thanks so much for joining us today. By the way, Spurs fans in particular, there is a Jeremy Sohan video on the way. I will be talking about him as well ahead of this season. And, uh, yeah, it's been great chatting to you all. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, but until then, I will see you soon.